everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jennifer. In this video, I'm gonna be taking the 70s style nightstand. This is something I found on the curb. I plan on turning it into some type of a pet bed, either for a cat or dog. The supplies I have gathered that I plan on using for this, first of all, it needs a coat of paint. This dark color is not gonna cut it. I do have a small pint of Oops paint. This is Valspar. I'm pretty sure I found this at Ace Hardware, but I always like to grab up interesting colors that I see there. You can get them for a fraction of the cost. Um, so I have that. I do have these Armacost LED strip lights. I've worked with these in the past, completely love them. So they did send me another box to use. Um, I intend on putting it on the inside of this pet bed. So there's that. I also today from Dollar General found this bath mat, which I think would be nice um, if I could maybe put that on the inside on the ground. I also have this cushion that I found for $2 at the local thrift store that I like to shop at. It had a really cheerful color and pattern and I thought that would be good in an upcoming project. So I have that slated for this one. If it fits, I might have to cut it down and uh, kind of configure it. Also, I have the shelf paper that I found at Walmart. It is Pioneer Woman brand, love her. Um, but I could not get over how well this pattern and the colors match the flowers on that. So these are the things I've gathered. I might add to it. First step is probably gonna be removing these doors. Um, I can always keep those in, and use them in something else. But I'm really picturing this just an open thing that the cat or dog could just crawl into whenever they want. Anyway, that is a quick overview. Stay with me and I'll show you exactly how I do it. Okay, the doors are removed and I'm looking at this and it looks like somebody knocked into the back of it. There's like a, an indentation in this press board. I am going to include this tape lighting if possible. So it's gonna need a place to plug in. I was thinking about making the access hole through the back like up here, but now I'm noticing that damaged spot um and i guess technically i could try to pry this off and flip it so that it would actually be on the top on that side but i could damage it um and no biggie i think that'll be covered up anyway by the things that are going inside so i'm right now intending on maybe making that look neater and cutting a hole for the plug to come through for this tape lighting but i think the next step would be um this needs cleaned up it's been sitting out here it has sawdust and everything on it so I think what I'm gonna do is lightly sand it, clean it all up, and then I can go ahead and paint. And I'm really hating these bun feet on the bottom. Um, they're not very cute. I might paint one just for the heck of it to see how it goes. Um, or kind of base my judgment off of painting it for the way that this looks with paint. Um, so yeah, next up, sanding this. <laughs> So earlier I told you I really hated these feet and as I turn this upside down to clean it and blow the cobwebs off of it, I realized that I really like the feet a lot better if they're flipped upside down. So I went ahead, I had to figure out how this was put together. Um, here there were like Craig style screws in it so I had to find my Craig bit. Uh, but anyway, I was able to undo it and then all that was connecting it then was a little strip of glue. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and detach these, flip them around. Um, I'll probably paint everything first and then reinstall it, but that is what I am dealing with. I think this is gonna look a lot better if those are flipped upside down, then it'll be more of a traditional bun style looking other than like that looks really heavy. I like the look of it this way. So that's one thing to keep in mind to always be open to other ways to use the materials you're given. Just open up this can of paint and look how pretty it's like a raspberry. I think this raspberry color is going to work very well. It's definitely going to need two coats. It's uh, going on. I'm glad I sanded it. It kind of helps it to give it a little bit more bite. Um, but look how pretty that is. I have the feet over um, on the slats that I pulled off. They're drying. When the glue is dry, I'll flip it over. I'll reattach. Uh, the Craig screws are in a different spot because I've moved them. Um, so anyway, they're drying, they're over there in the background. Uh, I think you can see that on camera. Um, anyway, just continuing on with the boring part of painting. Next up is reattaching. And in most, let's see, this is one of the original connection holes. I can use that, but I did have to 
um, drill a new one on this side because the old one is um, here, so I can't use that. But anyway, these go back on. And here's what I like to do. Do you see where I put left outside? That way, because um, sometimes things can vary a little bit, I wanted them to go back in the exact spot. So I, I did label them. Um, always a good thing to do. Okay, secure. I got up on a step stool so I could get leverage over top of it. And so I could film and you could see what I was doing. Okay, and these should go right back in the old places where they were. They do. Okay, everything feels really solid. Um, all right, I'm gonna paint and probably flip it over when everything's dry and then not looking forward to the contact paper because if you've ever worked with the kind of stuff, it's sort of a nightmare. Um, it's not very forgiving when you're dealing with wallpaper. At least it's kind of slippery on the back and you can kind of move it around. Where contact paper, you're like pretty much committed once you take that adhesive off. So not looking forward to that. Okie dokie, moment of truth. I cut a piece a tiny bit larger than what I'm going to need and a little bit longer. That way I have... Um, some room to trim it if I need to. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna start with a factory edge and line it up at the top and kind of um, peel off the backing, work my way around. I do have this uh, little tool that came with something else that was like contact paper like this. So I'm gonna try to use that the best I can to smooth it. Uh, I'm gonna start on the left portion, work my, my way up and I'll use gravity to my benefit. Um, so when I get around those corners, I'll turn this piece um, as I go along. So uh, I guess I just got to do it. It's like pulling off a Band-Aid. And this is going to be really tough to film because I have to be in the way. Um, let's see if I can get around here. All right. I'm thinking it might be a good idea to roll that paper inside out on itself. Um, and take the adhesive off slowly. I'm starting with the factory edge and I'm gonna start cutting right away. There's a couple little nooks and crannies. I'm gonna use my drywall ax to kind of cut around those and hopefully this goes smoothly. I'm just taking this, it's, it's kind of a nightmare to do this, but actually it's going better and I don't wanna jinx myself. Um, I'm very carefully undoing this. It did help to roll it back on itself and take the adhesive off slowly. Hopefully when I round that bend, I'll be um, factory edge along this side. So I'm just taking this and um, like I said, gently scooping it into here and my drywall ax when I need to get in and cut, this is very helpful. Um, it's really hard to film this just because um, the angle of the camera, but yeah, definitely. Go slow, make sure you get all the bubbles out, and um, it's, it's, don't try to rush. This drywall axe is working really great to kind of uh, get along there and be precise. I like the handle, um, it helps me just kind of get into corners. It's just really doing a nice job. My hand is far away from the blade. I don't have to worry about getting cut. Um, it really does a good job. That was not fun, but it actually turned out a lot better than I thought it would. I it's just the name of the game is taking your time, going slow. So now is the point I'm almost done really. I want to install these tape lights and all you do is unroll them they're self-adhesive you want to make sure when you go around the corners that you don't press it hard into the corner because it could disrupt the connection here once you get to the length that you desire all you do is cut this off it tells you where on the copper i am rounding the bend with this project and it's turning out so cute as you can see i have the little tape lights in there i have them very secure i know this is a pet and people are going to say it's a cord and pets can chew on a cord. And that really goes for any cord you have in your house. People have existing lamps 
and things of that nature. So if you're worried about your pet, don't do that part or just watch them while this is plugged in. So that being said, I went to the dollar store and I bought two bath mats. I had to hand sew them together. Um, I put a pillow in there, um, which you can access from that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the pillow in here. And it looks so cute. I'm gonna hang on to this for another project. It's just too much. Just the pillow is good. I went to my local thrift store and found these tiny little pictures with the little teacups. I'm gonna hang these up. I will do a closing shot. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope you like and follow. Follow me on TikTok and everywhere else that I am. I hope this inspires you to take a look at something that you find on the curb or maybe you're gonna throw away and breathe new life into it and find a new purpose for it. So I thank you for watching and until next time, take care.